Where did you do your internship? I first did one with Marathon Petroleum, just as a process. Mm-hmm. And they're a very large. Uh, they don't do. They just do refining uh, mm-hmm. here in the United States. And then um, I recently did one with Micron, uh, the semiconductor company. And so I did one that was specifically data science with them. So I worked on a lot of manufacturing data on how, and I, I made. I also had to do some front end work, meaning like. Mm-hmm. I had to build a um, a Python based web app to get a lot mm-hmm. of information to the process engineers that they okay. needed in a better way. So mm-hmm. we, I had to take a lot of process data and then kind of pull out the weeds per mm-hmm. se, and then put it in a nice format to give to the rest of the process engineers on the mm-hmm. team. So okay, interesting. That's quite interesting. So that was kind of like a direct mix practical use of data science and chemical engineering, would you say? Right? Mm-hmm. But what mm-hmm. was it a chemi- but what is it was it a chemical engineering position or was it a data scientist position? Um it was a mix. Mm-hmm. Um I think formally if you ask mm-hmm. HR it wasn't it didn't say data science on the thing, but mm-hmm. uh, it it was a uh I worked in uh, vapor depositions, physical and chemical vapor depositions was the area that I worked in. Okay. Um, but every engineer, they kind of have some data science work in, in every area. So, I mean, I just did, I did all my projects for data science, but I think mm-hmm. it was formally listed as a chemical engineering position. So, okay. Interesting. But, but that's always a good thing that you got a chance to really apply the skills that you had learned uh, in in the real world. And also, even better that it was a mix of chemical engineering and data science, so you could see the best of both mm-hmm. worlds on how, how they interact in, in a real real life scenario. But uh, just talking generally, so what were your main tasks that you had to deal with as an intern? Uh, okay, so I did a couple things where I was more process engineering, and that was going into their fab, kind of getting a tour of the fab. Um, mm-hmm. The, the clean room for uh, semiconductors. So if you just go to semiconductor fab on the internet, you'll be able to mm-hmm. find videos and they have all these suits on and whatnot. And the room has to be cleaner than an operating room in a hospital. So I did some work there. A lot of things in that field, like, so all the, it's all chemical engineering, all the, all the chemical parts in there to make mm-hmm. these computer chips, uh, it's batch. It's not continuous process. There are some mm-hmm. continuous bits in there. Some of it's just hard physics too, not mm-hmm. just not necessarily just uh, chemical engineering. So I did do a bit of that. Um, and so like for ours, they had ro- RPA robotic process automation, where mm-hmm. essentially instead of like using a pipe and pumps to mm-hmm. flow material through it, like we have robots that move wafers. And so okay. I had to learn, okay, mm-hmm. This is how to get the robot to do the, and that was kind of like, it was a totally different thing than mm-hmm. worrying about fluid mechanics or heat transfer and, and, and or mass, tra- you know, separations, yeah. getting things through pipes and into um, separators. It was, okay, how can we make this easier for the, for the robot to move this material from uh-huh. point A to point B? Um, yeah. And how do we make sure it doesn't get all, you know, bottled up and there isn't some sort of issue with having too many waivers in one place, or if there is a hang up, is there a way that I can get out of that hang up? Mm-hmm. Um, if that makes sense. So I, I did a little bit of that, but most of it was uh, was data science work. So okay, mm-hmm. I a lot of that was taking uh, data from our um, our our manufacturing database, and then I had to link two databases together in this massive process to mm-hmm. display some information on a Django web app. And Django is Python, one of the Python um, like web APIs where you can take Python code and then put it into a like a web page. And so we had a web page for our team and I took a lot of data from there, a lot of manufacturing data and said, you know, and it, it basically helped identify some gaps that we had in our manufacturing data um, okay. so that things wouldn't go wrong, you know, mm-hmm. that interesting. Makes sense. So, so that's quite interesting. So that's interesting working with robots and not dealing with all the pipes and heat transfer and fluid mechanics. That sounds like a yeah. thing for a lot of people. Yeah, a little different, a little different. <laughs> yeah. But 
still had mm -hmm. to work with a lot of the uh, process data. Mm -hmm. So like how it works in a lot of semiconductor fields is you'll, you'll have a, you know, you have your wafer, you perform mm -hmm. some process on it and then you pull it out and then you measure it. And mm -hmm. so you'll get the measurement data and then you have your inputs to your process, you know, your mm -hmm. heat, your temperature, um, the time that it's in the chamber or whatever yep. it may be. And then, you know, your chemical composition going in and then you have the data coming out and you have to kind of match up exactly where these yep. things are. And so I had mm -hmm. to take a bit of that data and, and display okay. it to mm -hmm. uh, our process engineers so they can make a better decision. Interesting. So, but the, the, then if I was to ask you for, as, as an intern, what were the five hard and five soft skills that you had to use uh, at the workplace? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so for hard skills, mm -hmm. for my particular case, uh, learning Python and SQL, mm -hmm. those would be the first two. I had to learn Django on the fly. Okay. And I'd never, I'd never used that. I'd used that briefly before. Okay. I'd only, I've only done like a small little thing with that. And so I kind of mm -hmm. just knew the outline of it. I had to learn that one just kind of on my own. My boss, mm -hmm. uh, we were putting a new product into production and a lot of our production was done overseas. So like my boss was in Singapore while I was in, uh, here in the States and whatnot. And so that was, you know, you have to kind of go, I had to learn a lot of things on my own. And mm -hmm. it was just kind of how things worked out. Uh, another hard skill was just making sure you understood a lot of the processes. And so mm -hmm. a lot of this had to do, a lot of it had to do, actually, it was kind of a mix between, ma it was really mass transfer because a lot of our environments were in vacuum um, and heat transfer. That was kind of the other thing. But it was a vapor deposition or atomic layer deposition. That was kind of the other hard skill I had to learn. And maybe the fifth hard skill would have been a, uh, a lot of statistics, just kind of statistics okay. in general, understanding okay. what things mean. Soft skills, uh, one, loosening up, mm -hmm. like be enthusiastic, have some fun. It can be a goofball here and there. It's okay. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be serious all the time. I think that really lightens the mood and mm -hmm. makes everything easier to talk about because then people don't feel pressured. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's a big soft skill. I think the other soft skill that I had to work with is just being able to communicate things effectively vocally in meetings, mm -hmm. um, especially to those, I mean, English is my first language, but a lot of my coworkers, that wasn't the case. And mm -hmm. so working with others with different languages, you don't necessarily have to speak another language all the time, mm -hmm. but you need to be able to, uh, I, I had to learn to rephrase things a lot of the time. So a lot of the vocal work. And so just being able to check for understanding Mm -hmm. um, and creating an environment where others can ask questions. That made things very effective in meetings. Um, the other soft skill I had, and so so that would be, you know, vocal skills would include presenting, mm -hmm. just public speaking. Mm -hmm. uh, most internships will require you to do a presentation at the end, how to mm -hmm. do one of those. So a lot of vocal work, just being able to explain what you can. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to write that many memos or anything like okay. that. Mm -hmm. um, I have in my, in my previous internship, that's all they wanted to do. They didn't want to talk vocally or anything like that. It was Mm -hmm. It was all, uh, it was all send out this memo, send out this memo to ops, mm -hmm. send out this op ops, meaning, you know, the people working on the machines, yep. um, a lot of that. I think that is important for probably, I didn't do that in my, my mm -hmm. previous internship just because of how things work with, with the, the technicians yep. in the fab, but getting good at memos and being very mm -hmm. clear and concise, like they do not want to have to read a lot. Mm -hmm. Don't make anything like. A lot of times, at least here in the States, when they teach you growing up, you know, make your essay this many pages. And in reality, you want it to be this short. You want to be able to have all the information you need and nothing else. Exactly. And so getting yep. good at memos, I think, because that's the majority of your communication. Mm -hmm. uh, as an engineer, I would argue, at least okay. in process engineering. Mm -hmm. So both the house with the soft skills. That's interesting. But, yeah, but vocal if... work and... Mm -hmm. If I could follow up on what you said about the vocal work, because communication is key when you're working in the industry. That's something that anyone, everyone agrees on. But it gets quite interesting in your case, because uh, I was told at one point that knowing how to do your job, that's one thing, and being able to explain it to the other person what you're doing, that's the other part of the same job. But now, since you were in data science, you were making all this Python interface, working coding in Python, Having to explain all that to the layman, even chemical engineers that you were working with, or other yeah. management products, 
How how was that in your experience? So that was kind of tricky. Um, mm -hmm. So when I did my final presentation, I had to use a lot of terminology that, frankly, even like the vice president or AVP of the company did not like mm -hmm. understand. Not because I mean, not because they weren't able to comprehend it, but because they they, they just sometimes you get a lot of in any field. There's a lot of jargon, mm -hmm. and so being able to break down jargon on what things mean. And so even for chemical engineers, I, I don't know any chemical engineer that really isn't smart to be able to figure things out. I think maybe the best way is to think about how these terms, if you're going into data science, mm -hmm. how are these terms explained to you in the first place? Mm -hmm. If you're, if you're, because you're coming from where these chemical engineers were before you started to learn something different. Mm -hmm. And so with a lot of these terms, um, so like I had to, so take for instance this, I had to explain the front end versus back end difference. Now, granted, I was working in the, in a hard a computer, you know, a silicon manufacturing company. So a lot of them were, were very familiar with computer science, like just at least not necessarily by coursework, but by association. So I had to tell them like, this is the back end. This is the front end. This is what the back end does. It does mm -hmm. a lot of the communications. The front end just brings that information to make it visible to you. And so I had to take a lot of these terms mm -hmm. and just kind of sit down. And I even had to talk to my boss and be like, okay, wow. How do I effectively explain this mm -hmm. to these people? And generally they're a bit older. So they, you know, they didn't have to do a whole, they either had to do no coding in their degree or the coding that they did was like Fortran or something yeah. like that, you know, something mm -hmm. out of the eighties or late seventies um, or even earlier. Um, I guess Fortran's earlier, Fortran sixties. Um, but just going through it, jargon, just getting through with all okay. the jargon. Because exactly. once you get past the jargon, most mm -hmm. everybody will understand it, at least people can call it Exactly, but that, because that's a very good point, because learning data science is not simply merely enough how to do all that stuff. You need to be able to explain to the people when you're working with. And that is something that a lot of students forget that they might have to explain what you're doing to the other person as well. And a lot of people, they just go into that black hole where they start throwing these terms, terminology at the other yeah. people. <laughs> not being able to explain what you have done so far. So that's a very good point. And that is very interesting what you said that you must be able to explain the, the stuff in the same way as the first time you heard it yourself on how you learned it. And that that is very neat trick to when you're explaining stuff, complex stuff to other people. Mm -hmm. That's quite interesting. But if I was to ask you a last question about your internship, for the students out there, or chemical, the chemical engineers that are pursuing the same passion, the same path in data science, and they would like to find this real life opportunity in data science in the industry, it can be quite difficult since a lot of people, they would prefer to have someone with a data science degree than a chemical engineering degree. How would you mm -hmm. suggest people can really break that wall and really convince the employer that, you know what, I am the guy worth taking a chance on? Mm. Okay, so kind of two ways. Um, mm -hmm. You need to have some work behind you. So that's why mm -hmm. I suggest to do any data science research work or any data analytics research work, even within mm -hmm. chemical engineering. So, mm -hmm. I mean, if your department or anybody has anything that you can work on and do data analytics with, if you say data analytics, then data science that will usually come up a little bit better. Or mm -hmm. if you can't do that, have personal projects okay. that you work on mm -hmm. um, and have a GitHub account, put all that mm -hmm. on there. And then after that, there's kind of two routes. Um, mm -hmm. you can do a data science like internship or job that isn't in chemical engineering. That'll mm -hmm. be harder to convince people, but they'll take, a lot of them will take any engineering degree. Mm -hmm. Um, but the, but that would, that relies heavily on the projects or work that you've had. The other mm -hmm. thing that would be is a lot of these companies, a lot of chemical, chemical companies that hire chemical engineers, they need a chemical engineer that's also able to do data science work now. Mm -hmm. And so if you can convince them now, thankfully I didn't have to do that. Um, so like with my first internship, I was trying to get more data analytics stuff. It was really hard to get that work for them. They, the mm -hmm. way that they had partitioned that is they wanted people with master's degrees or PhDs to do some of that. Mm -hmm. um, that is changing. So in a good way, but my, when, with Micron, they just, they approached me and said, we like what you did as a data scientist. We need more of this. So a lot mm -hmm. of companies out there have a need. Um, if you don't have to convince them, that's great. If not, like tell them like, Hey, do you, what kind of work do you need? Do you need data analytics work? I like, just ask them, um, okay. mm -hmm. ask the recruiters, especially if they're, if the recruiters are, you know, an actual engineer, mm -hmm. um, 
they'll know the type of work. And okay. you may not have the title of that, uh, you know, data science mm -hmm. but just ask them like, what kind of data analytic work do you need? Okay. And I can do mm -hmm. that. Here's my, here's my resume to show you. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting. Those, those are very valuable tips people can really use. But just going back to what you said about making personal projects and you make an account on GitHub and make your own projects. What projects mm -hmm. do you suggest would be the most impactful that that might look very good on your CV? That's a good like, question. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. a lot of times people kind of just get some generic data set. Mm -hmm. um, get something obscure if you can. You want to have something that has the whole process from getting and retrieving the data to cleaning it to mm -hmm. then making visualizations and then making suggestions or making a machine learning model. You want mm -hmm. something that contains the entire process. And so if you can't get, I would say, how do I put this, data that isn't um, like just readily available. So that's mm -hmm. why I said if you can get university projects, great. Um, if you can't do that, mm -hmm. Kaggle is okay. There's some good sources on there. Um, okay. I would look up, um, you could say chemical engineering data sets on, in Google or Kaggle. Mm -hmm. um, then you'll be able to find a data set that works for you. And usually there'll be either a, depending on what type of data you're working with, there'll either be mm -hmm. a uh, CSV file mm -hmm. or there'll be a, uh, just an assortment of other types of files. So if you're working on image data, Mm -hmm. um it'll be you know a bunch of jpegs whatever it may be in in files uh just kind of mm -hmm. a file for file folders but kaggle is a good place mm -hmm. uh, kaggle isn't always the best mm -hmm. but they do there is a you can find chemical and manufacturing data on there um but yeah i would go to your i would go to some sort of institution first mm -hmm. after if you're at trying school and just ask for data mm -hmm. um and then after that, look up any, any internet search that has data set after it will be okay. Oh, yeah, uh, the yeah. Kaggle is a great place. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of places like like the U.S. government even has like a data website, okay. and it's like it's and you can you can just get a lot of their publicly available data okay. after that. Mm -hmm. And so like something really interesting for chemical engineers is a lot of like renewable energy data over the past mm -hmm. you know few decades. Mm -hmm. That wouldn't be okay. that would that would be a decent place to start. Oh, 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 oh,